Hello there! Welcome to another fun tutorial. Lately I've been having fun playing with mixing alcohol markers with watercolors, so I thought I would share my process. The cool thing about alcohol markers is they're completely waterproof, so you can easily layer them by using them first or second or third, you know, you can just keep going between watercolor and markers, and I like to do that. So here's one example I did. This is a really neat one. I first outlined the cat in marker and then I just filled it in like a coloring book page which was really easy to do and it gives it that soft look with the markers. But the example I'll be showing today is going to be more loose and fun like this bird illustration that I did. This style is more fun and loose and this is the style we're going to focus on today. So the markers I'll be using are these Kelly Art brush markers. As you can see there is a brush end and a broad chisel end. They also sell ones with a harder and smaller fine point instead of the soft brush but I prefer this one way more because it acts like a normal brush. I'll leave a link to these below, but this video is not sponsored in any way. I'm just sharing my experience. I got the 51 set, but if I were to do this again, I'd get the bigger one with 101 colors because this set is missing some lighter pastel colors. But overall, for the price, I'm happy with it. So the brush tip is very easy to control and you can easily make thick and thin lines like with a normal brush. But if you use it quickly, you can also get these super fun strokes that have a slight gradient to them. It's not that noticeable, but I really like how they look. I personally love making lines with a lot of movement like this. It just feels so alive. The chisel tip is also great and you can also get really fun and playful lines with a lot of movement. Before you start, I recommend you play around with your lines like this on a scrap piece of paper just to try it out and get used to making different marks. Another cool thing about alcohol markers is they blend together like real paint. As you can see when I draw next to each color, they blend where they touch and it makes for seamless gradients that look a lot like paint. I won't be using this effect much in this tutorial, but it's something to keep in mind and it's kind of fun to use for things like cheeks if you wanted to. It's just something really cool about these markers that I want to explore more. So I'll be painting this flamingo and this is a free stock image so feel free to use it as well. I left a link for the high res photo that you can download below. You can follow along with me if you want or you can just see what techniques I use and do your own subject. But first, let's pick out our colors. I think that's so important to do before you start, especially if you don't have a lot of experience with playing with colors. So on a scrap piece of paper, I tried out all the colors I wanted to use and put away the ones that didn't feel right. In the end, I picked just these colors. Feel free to do your own thing. This is a totally personal preference. Everyone likes different colors and resonates with different colors. But just try to pick colors with varying values, which just means how light or dark they are. And you can get different variations of the same color if you want to make it more monochrome. Okay, so time to sketch. I want to show you guys how I sketch with a darker pencil first, because the real sketch will be with my super light blue one that you won't be able to really see. I use very, very loose and broad strokes trying to nail the right proportions by using very simple shapes. This is how I always sketch and it just comes with experience. But just use simple shapes. You can draw anything using simple shapes. I have a class that shows you how to draw anything doing this and it's really as easy as it sounds. I'll link it below, but you can just copy what I do to the best of your ability if you're not an experienced artist by simply pausing here and just copying. Also, this is the pencil I always sketch with and this is why. So as you can see, when I try to erase both of them, the light one erases so easily, but the dark one does not. No matter how hard I try, I won't be able to erase the darker lines completely. This is why it's important to use a light pencil and to sketch very lightly. Okay, let's start the real illustration. So I sketched out my flamingo using essentially the same steps that you just saw, using my super light blue pencil. I'll link the lead below. And when I'm done, I can go in with markers. So the markers are transparent, so the lines will show through them if I draw on it now, just like watercolors would. And I won't be able to erase them just like I wouldn't be able to with watercolors. So my next step is to use an eraser to lighten the lines as much as I can. But I keep the lines slightly visible to the point that I can see where they are. But they're so unnoticeable that when I scan it in or take photos, you won't be able to see them at all. Now when they're barely visible, I'm ready to use the markers. I like to start with a lighter one to start defining the outline. Notice how loose my strokes are and the hint at the fuzziness of the feathers in certain spots. I'm trying to keep my lines playful. It's important to not be scared to make mistakes because fear can be crippling and a killer to creativity. Trust me, I know. <laughs> I thought blue would look cool in the outline, so I added that in as well. Even though it's not realistic, I love to use unrealistic colors. They just add that level of playfulness to a piece that wouldn't be there otherwise. 
but don't be scared to play with your colors and do whatever you want to do. Maybe you like black and white, you know, whatever you want to do. Okay, so next I wanted to add some pizzazz with hot pink. This is a very strong and bold color, so I try not to overdo it, which is hard for me because I love to overdo it because I'm... <laughs> That's what I do. But I add more detail throughout and tiny dots and lose small strokes. Notice how it makes a nice purple when it overlaps with the teal color. Because these colors are transparent, they mix when they overlap just like watercolors do. I think that really adds a nice touch to it and it looks cohesive. Now I eyeball the piece and see what else is needed. I use the lightest pink to add more detail and some shadows with just fun loose strokes. And I just keep switching between my various colors and adding in little things here and there until it feels right. So I had one color that was really dark and it was like this dark plum. And I take my darkest color and add the beak and the eye. This darker color will be the most noticeable. So I use it very sparingly. You don't have to use a super dark color, but I like to up the contrast with things like this. So I use it for the general outline and some feathers in the wing and that's it. I'm really careful not to overdo this because I've done things like this before and I've overdone it and it just didn't look good. But I still played before because it's all about experience and that's how you learn what looks good and what doesn't. So I also wanted to add some leaf type shapes around the flamingo for more fun. Now I'm going to use my darker teal that I haven't used yet and I also add in some details in the beak because it's dark but I don't make it the black that it is in the reference. I like it colorful and I add some details inside the body just little dots. And that's it for the marker portion. So feel free to use the markers less or not to do a background or whatever you like. This is just how I did it, but you can be more neat or more loose or whatever you want to be. Just find your own favorite way of doing things. That's why it's so important to play and have fun because that's how you find your favorite way of doing things and that's how you find your style. Now it's time to add watercolor. I start with a loose background. Notice how I'm very playful with the paint mixed with the water and I'm only going to use colors I already use with the markers to make it more cohesive. For this loose background, I just paint it straight on the page and then clean my brush with water and add water everywhere. It doesn't have to be perfect because the beauty is in the imperfection. Just do it quickly and don't try to be uniform. Just make fun strokes. That's where the beauty is. I'm telling you, that's what makes it so fun to look at. Now I add in pink while the page is still wet so that it does this beautiful wet and wet effect and they can blend and you can add more splatter at this stage. I add a little bit of that, but uh, even if you wait for it to dry a little and add more later on, that would look really good. So I'm gonna let this fully dry and I'm gonna paint the flamingo. I want it to be very light because I want the whole piece to feel airy. So I'm using very light colors and keeping an eye on the reference for darks and lights. You can easily see darks and lights by just squinting your eyes on any picture or reference that you ever look at. And then when you squint your eyes, it kind of puts together darks and lights and you can mimic that with your paint as best as you can. I grab some hot pink and add it to the darker areas. I'll also add some fun patterns to its wings and body, but I thought that was a little too dark. It didn't look good. So I go in with an empty brush and pick up excess paint. I also use the paper towel to do the same thing. You can use them to erase and lift paint. Some paint is more staining, but most paints you can lift. Now, you see, because I experiment so much, I make a lot of mistakes and this was a mistake, but I know how to clean it up and to make it look better. And I like how it turned out because it gives it a lot of fun texture. So don't be scared of mistakes, just play. Okay, so adding a little more paint around the piece, being careful to keep it light and to keep some white of the page until it feels done. I do want to say that white of the page is so important because this is our highlight. And when you make fun cartoony pieces like this, the white of the page just really helps things to pop and not look dead. I think that's so important to keep white. So don't paint everything like we you know in color, just keep some white. It just, it just makes it look good. Now this part is optional, but if you have some white that you can use on top, like white Posca markers or white gel pen, this is the time to add in the highlights. You can also use any kind of paint that you have, like white acrylic or white gouache. Just make sure your watercolor paint is fully dry, and then you can add white where you want it. I personally like to add little dots that are varied in size for a magical sparkly feeling, and also I add outlines to areas that touch each other for more of a contrast. Especially if it's like a dark area, touching a lighter area just makes it pop more. I also did something a little different this time with the postcard marker and added little swirly lines in the background until it felt done. The cool thing about markers is you can go in after you paint as well. I thought the piece was missing something so I added some leaf shapes around it but I felt like I messed up because they didn't feel right. They didn't look right. But there's no undo button because this is traditional media. So what do I do? Do I chuck the whole thing? Is it ruined? Did it go in Photoshop? No. <laughs> It's okay, it's okay. I've made so many mistakes, I've learned how to deal with them all. I really, I can fix anything, especially using Procreate. But this time, I just stepped away 
and when I came back to the piece, I added more detail in. I didn't record it when I first started because I was so in the zone, but here you see me finishing it up. I decided to fill in the leaves, and that just made it look better, and I added a million more dots, and then I used the postcode marker to add some detail to some of the leaves, and I'm done. At first I thought like I overdid it, and it didn't look that good, and I was like, oh my god, I failed. But then I was like, I like this, so I don't know, maybe you like this too? I mean, it's not perfect, but I like how it turned out. It just, it feels alive. I, I like it. It was fun to play. Well, I hope watching me paint this gave you an idea of what you can do to play around with your markers and watercolors. They're so fun, they work together so well, and uh, this is just one style, and there are infinite ways you can mix your mediums, but I've been really enjoying doing things like this lately. And I hope this brings you joy as well and inspires you. But there is nothing like the feeling of just playing with and creating art and just making new stuff and seeing what works together, and I'm just so excited to play with this more. Even if your results aren't what you want, like I wasn't super happy with this flamingo, it's all about the process, and the more you create, the more you'll make things you like. And art is in the eye of the beholder anyway. I mean, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So I don't know, guys, it doesn't matter. Just have fun and someone will like your art. And <laughs> even if it's you, just, just enjoy it. Just enjoy making. I mean, we shouldn't have to make just for things to be gorgeous all the time. We just like to create and play and get our hands dirty. So just try and play and enjoy the ride. I hope you guys found this video helpful and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Have a great day and remember to play.